What is up, guys? TW Booty Hunter here with another video and with another reaction video. Yeah, and before we get into the reaction video, I got to go ahead and vent for a little bit. So while I'm doing this, I guess kind of rant, feel free to skip to whatever part it's saying, whatever time card it's saying in the video. Feel free to skip to that. Um, if you just want to get to the reaction, but I got to rant on something. And one thing I got to rant on is the fact that I wasn't able to give you guys a GTA playthrough yesterday uh, by the time I'm making this video. Uh, yeah, I do still deeply apologize for that. It was very unfortunate. I had apparently recorded the video um and i guess well i, I no, there was no audio I, I can't even say there was game audio there was no audio whatsoever i don't know how the hell it happened um there was usually times where there would be game audio but i would forget that obs uh would disconnect my mic so it randomly you know there was no audio from my you know from my mic but yeah it, it and honestly, it does suck because now I'm going to have to try my best. I may have to wind up starting the game over because my dumbass didn't save on multiple save slots, which is one thing I got to learn in the future, not just with this game, but with future gameplays in general, just in case something stupid like this happens again. Um, yeah. I got to make future, uh, I got to make like multiple save slots next time. Uh, but it looks like I'll probably have to restart the game, try to get back to where I was, and then maybe next week record that episode. Um, I don't know. I, I, I might do that, but then there's a part of me that doesn't want to do that because I've had to go through so much crap to get this series rolling. To get this series done, I don't know, man. It, it seems like there's something in the universe that just does not want me to do a complete Grand Theft Auto playthrough. It, I, I don't know what the hell it is, but it definitely seems that way, dude. Uh, because I've never had this problem with any of my other gameplays. You know, I haven't had this problem with Shadow the Hedgehog. Uh, I haven't had this problem with Sleeping Dogs. I haven't yet had this problem with any of my other videos except San Andreas, except GTA. I don't know. I don't know. It, it's really weird. Um, I guess I'll try to do that. I, I, it all kind of depends on what I really feel like doing. I may just, I don't know. I almost, I'm almost thinking about kiboshing the whole series or just like momentarily stopping it. I don't know. I don't want to do that, but it, it, the, let's just say the future might be looking pretty bleak for the Grand Theft Auto San Andreas playthrough series once again. I don't know. Something in the universe just does not want me to complete this damn series because we've had to go through so much crap. Everything from my social account, get, my social club account getting hacked to, ugh, man, you name it. it. It's just been insane. But enough with all that. Uh, it's been now four minutes of me complaining. Let's go ahead, get to the reaction. Hit that intro, Courtney. All right, in the video that we are going to be reacting to is why the sixth generation of consoles was the best generation, and this is something I'm telling you right now, I definitely, wholeheartedly agree with. Fuck what you heard. You know, I don't care about any of the pre... I don't care about any generations uh, before. I don't care about any console generations after. The sixth generation, I'm telling you now, easily the best generation out of all generations. I don't give two dams that now in this current generation of consoles, you can play it 4K. <laughs> I don't care about any of that crap. Six gen consoles, the sixth generation of gaming 
was peak level gaming. The 360 era, 360 PS3 era was cool, but I got to be honest, man, a little bit after the sixth generation, it just kind of seemed like that's where things were really kind of going to crap, especially around the 360 and PS3 era, because that's where that whole microtransaction bullshit started. But let's get into it. Why was the sixth generation of consoles the greatest generation that ever was and still is? And for those that are wondering, the consoles that came out at that time were the PlayStation 2, the Nintendo GameCube, and last and honestly, certainly least, the original Xbox. Because Honest to God, one of my favorite consoles of all time. Let's face it, that thing was Easily. a glorified Halo in the OG Guy Xbox. I love the PlayStation 2, but the OG was Xbox. was just to dabble into early online console Man. games. There was something. <laughs> Dude. I am playing back when it was good. Gaming. But I digress. You also might be saying, hmm, how could you make an assertive statement about something that is completely subjective and up to your own personal opinion? How could you possibly know for certain that the sixth generation was the best? And you know, if you argue that there was a better generation before, slightly after, or you know, you could say that every generation has its moments. You know, I would say to that that you know, oh, your God. is completely wrong. And yeah. not for any good reason, but for the simple fact that I would not be making this video. I would not be editing this disaster if I wasn't absolutely certain that the sixth generation of consoles was the golden age of 3D gaming. Best generation. You also might be thinking that this guy is completely biased since he grew up with the sixth generation of consoles. Well, listen here, Mr. Strawman argument that I pulled out of my ass completely. The sixth generation of consoles wasn't the only generation of consoles that I, I grew forgot up what that game I grew was up called. With the fourth, but fifth, I, and that, finally that's the seventh a good game. If anybody hasn't and played I that. could have any. I remember playing that game one those time. Generations, but it's the sixth was, one. I'm pretty sure it was on the PS2. I, I played that on, and for a pretty Dude, good reason. While well, I was looking hard. at my PlayStation 3 library, a huge percentage of those games were just HD ports and collections of PlayStation 2 games. I never grew up with a PlayStation. To. I had to get the console recently. I was a GameCube kid, but it's painfully obvious to me that the PlayStation 2 was the greatest console ever made. And this is coming from somebody that did not grow up with a PS2. And the reason why I think that is not for the console's hardware or its specifications or any of that technical bullshit, but for the sole purpose, for the sole reason that it had the largest <laughs> and most diverse library out of any console. Look at all of that lineup Period. of games, and dude. And to be and honest, just I don't PS2. think I've seen any console generation come close to what the PlayStation 2 and GameCube generation did. So what the hell does the golden age of anything even mean? Am I just listening off of buzzwords just to sound smarter and get some clickbait? I mean, kind of a little. I mean, you got to work the YouTube algorithm. But moving on from that, I would argue that my own personal definition for what a golden age is is a ripe moment within a medium's history when the technology has finally advanced enough for that medium to be expressed in its full potential. So I would argue that the golden age for film was in the 60s and 70s and to a lesser extent the 80s, since this was a moment in film's history when for the first time, mainstream movies all had color, sound, a oh, decent yeah. length, and orchestras. And the movies that came out at that time which is good for the time they came out in. They were timeless classics. You had movies like The Good, The Bad, The Ugly, The Godfather, and Star Wars. And again, these weren't just good movies for the time they came out in. To this day, we are still trying to reach the standards that those movies set for film. And we are still making remakes and revisions of those movies mm. or movies that are influenced from them. So yes, this is my point. That would be the golden age for film. I would also like to make a point that the sixth generation of consoles wasn't gaming's only golden age. Well, how could you have more than one golden age of anything? Well, gaming is significantly different than any other medium that came before it. You could definitely have more gaming, than one golden age. Gaming. And sometime in the future, maybe we'll be in the matrix enjoying virtual reality. But my main point is none of these types of gaming are comparable to one another. They are all separate and distinct. God, Lee. And my I dude was really the into that VR game. The best generation because, you know, that's the most advanced technology we have, 3D gaming. And, you know, virtual reality gaming hasn't come along yet. 
and I would Ooh. consider the golden age of 2D gaming. I've never played VR, bro. Gaming. That I, is the Super Nintendo. Like, hey, and I Genesis. know that's going to be shocking. The generation that bro, came I have never played anything VR in my life, dude. But, oh, my God. I mean, it seems intense, though. For it was a little sloppy because, you know, I've never the played anything wasn't VR. fully advanced enough for developers to implement the kinds of visions they imagined in their heads. And also, nobody knew how to make a 2D side-scrolling game or an RPG or an adventure game. Developers just had to experiment. They had to throw what, everything they had at a wall just to see what sticks. And eventually, they figured it out. Sometimes within that own generation, too. I mean, Nintendo figured out how to make Mario. Yeah, I mean, Capcom, not bad. I, I love Mega Super Man, Mario Brothers. But Brothers there were also a lot of slips and stumbles along the way. Because let's be honest here. It was there's a reason me to really why the, the Mega Man. original Metroid had to be remade. Uh, it's because the original Metroid is a hot mess. The game is a disaster. Uh, for starters, every background looks the same. There's no map, so it's easy to get lost. The tile sits all look similar. The bosses are complete shit. And the game, it's just, it did not age well in the slightest. There's a reason why they had to remake it. But then one generation later, within the fourth generation, developers fully figured out how to make 2D games. Super Metroid is not just a good Metroid game, it is one of the best games ever made. It took what worked in the original Metroid and expanded on it and fixed all the problems. Now you had a mapping system. Now you had a fantastic yeah, Metroid, atmospheric dude, I soundtrack. Love Metroid. But more importantly, all the environments were unique and distinct from one another to a point that even though the game did have a map system, you didn't need to use it. You could get by completely fine off of your own memory just based off of the game's landmarks and environmental storytelling. And to be honest, yes, that generation aced it for 2D gaming. RPGs got I figured was, out with Chrono Trigger. Uh, and yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, Action I wasn't that like much of a Mega Nintendo Man guy, X. really. Need I go on? I, I have played some There's Nintendo. a reason why the game SNES obviously. Classic consistently outsells the NES Classic. It's because people game know where my favorite the games are at. Of the Nintendo consoles, easily. So one reason why the sixth generation of consoles is the golden age of 3D gaming is that it had the luxury of coming after the fifth generation. And just oh, like yeah. how the NES that wasn't a bad generation either. foundations for the generation that would follow it, the PlayStation 1 and the Nintendo 64 did all the hard work and experimentation to see what worked in a 3D setting. Exactly. One thing we really, learned was that really if you wanted time, to move like a character around really in 3D, to push you needed analog controls. That generation so the PlayStation copy. 1 didn't even release initially with an analog controller. That was an accessory that released after the fact when the damage had already been done. But I digress. The point is, is that a lot of those games Though, didn't... of course, I've always been more partial to the PS1 uh, than the N64. Age to back wide. then, and but that was let's just, just look at a base level. Let's look at the graphical leap in quality between the PlayStation 1 and the PlayStation 2. It had a novelty if you grew up at that time. This was the largest leap in graphical quality of all time. Ever since then, every generation has only subtly or incrementally increased graphical fidelity, just bit by bit. But let's just compare because, like, it, it, it's hard for like any generation. Uh, like the next generation of like consoles to look better than what's already now because it, it's like it all kind of looks the same they're all trying to make games look as hyper realistic as humanly possible so when the next generation of games comes out it's not gonna look any different how much more realistic do you have to make it a at that point they're not even video games anymore it's just like it's like I don't even know if you could even like call it like actual like video games. It's just more like VR or something. That's what it. That that's what it's gonna be more like. Well, not even VR. It's just gonna be. I don't even know. <laughs> PlayStation One Solid Snake to PlayStation Two Big Boss. The difference is mind blowing. PlayStation One Solid Snake is a blocky, warpy mess who doesn't even have a face. He just has a smeared texture. And when he talks in cutscenes, he doesn't even flap his lips. No. He just bobbles his head up and down <laughs> like a shitty 2007. But that's all they had back then. But then you reach the PlayStation 2 and these 3D models are just gorgeous. Snake no longer has an interpretation of a face. He has a face. He yeah. has an eyes, a nose, and a mouth. 
all capable of showing his own emotions, capable of showing sadness, joy, sorrow, just everything. And the graphics just look phenomenal. Now, that isn't to say that the PlayStation 2 or the Nintendo GameCube could capture photorealistic graphics, but if developers were smart enough to stylize their graphics, then those games tended to age better. And one of the reasons why Metal Gear Solid, Solid Snake, and Big Boss, and Resident Evil 4's character models looked so fantastic, and one of the reasons why they age so good is that they are not based off of a photorealistic interpretation of what a person looks like. They exactly. are based- they still look like video games. Like, they didn't try to make it look exactly like real life. And then on top of that, they still focused more on the gameplay. They still focused more on the story. It wasn't just about pretty pictures. Like, come on, man. It, or nothing. Ray tracing. It wasn't about that crap. It was about off the of an actual artist quality of the games. Issue of what a person looks like. Big Boss is not based off a of human being. He's based off of Yoji Shinkawa's phenomenal artwork, and that's why the graphics back then, if handled properly, aged pretty well. And now graphics were incredible enough that developers could get become oh, creative uh, what, what, and stylized that, uh, their freaking art. Freaking Okami. Okami experimented I have yet to play with cell shaded graphics, and the game just looks like the way it was intended. It looks like an ancient Japanese painting. That is how well it looked back then. Because it's like I seen that game. I remember I watched, I seen the review of it on X Play. I, I seen it in stores when I was buying games for my PS2 back in the day. I never bothered to pick it up because I didn't think I was gonna be able to get into a game about like some sort of werewolf or something. But I don't know. I'm gonna have to play it one of these days and see just how I like it. You know, some other developers slipped and stumbled along the way. Uh, Grand Theft Auto character models didn't age so well because they made the mistake yeah. of trying to be photorealistic. That actually does look you know, really real good. That, they, Which, they, they, while it looked good at the, the time, looking good right doesn't look so good nowadays. But my point is, is that, damn, at a first glance, the graphics for this console generation were godlike. Oh, yeah. I think they still kind of hold up now, though. Come over here. Come closer. Uh, I'm going to let you guys in on a secret, you know. Having good graphics. But that doesn't mean shit if your game plays like complete no. trash. What separates video games from any other art form in existence is the fact that there's player control and consequences. What separates video games from movies is all yeah. of the gameplay. But luckily, every 3D genre of gaming went through this cycle of first trying out the genre, then experimenting upon it, and then perfecting it. And that well, that's the problem, man. It's like... They don't even want, I don't know, they don't even want, it, it seems like people don't even want video games. They don't even want to play video games anymore. They just literally want interactive movies. All happened within this generation. And you could see that pretty blatantly with Rockstar's Grand Theft Auto series. You know, first they tried out 3D open world game design with Grand Theft Auto 3. Then they experimented upon it with Vice City and then perfected it with San Andreas. And San Andreas wasn't just a good 3D open world game for the time it came out. And to this day, we are still trying to reach the standard that that game set. Even games coming out nowadays- They can't. They can't. That's what's crazy. They can't. Neither, nor Grand, no Grand Theft Auto, no Grand Theft Auto-like game Rather it's Sleeping Dog, you know, rather it's even Sleeping Dogs, rather it's Cyberpunk, rather it's Saints Row, rather it's even Grand Theft Auto's released after San Andreas, have not been able to hold up in terms of, you know, gameplay and con and just like variety, mission variety, and really gameplay variety and all that. They have not been able to hold a candle to San Andreas, and that is what's sad. These aren't as detailed as what happened in San Andreas. <laughs> Cyberpunk 77 is an unfinished mess, and you oh, can't do half as many things in that game I still play it from as you time could in time, San Andreas. 
This was the generation of gaming that perfected my favorite genre, the character action game. And character action games can be best described as games where the combat is mainly focused on mm -hmm. performing stylish combos all within a 3D space. Exactly. And the game that best represents that statement was Devil May Cry. Devil May Cry was a bold step into 3D action games. And what did we have to base that off of? Rising Zan, nothing. Samurai Literally Gun, nothing. A PS1 game that's a cult that. classic that, let's be honest here, nobody really played. But other than that, I don't even Devil know what May that Cry game is. was almost like the 3D version of a fighting game. There were directional inputs, you could perform combos, and you could See, look at the combat the right there in Devil May Cry, dude. them even with your guns, that is was sick. absolutely mental. You had pause combos, which prevented players from spamming attacks all the time, and it was awesome. And the series was experimented upon with a game we don't want to talk about, Devil May Cry 2, and then perfected with Devil May Cry 3. Devil May Cry 3, basically, Hideaki Itsuno threw every single gameplay mechanic he could possibly think of at the wall, and they all stuck. This was a game where you yeah. could switch between multiple styles. If you use Swordmaster or Gunslinger, you could increase Which the combo so potential awesome. of either your guns or your Still melee weapons. Still to this weapons. day, an awesome game If you switch to Trickster, you can move around like an anime character. You could teleport right in front of enemies or bosses' face and just fight them like that, and it was awesome. And then you had one of my favorite gameplay mechanics, the Royal Guard. And what the Royal Guard was, basically, it gave Dante the ability to block an enemy strike. And if you blocked an enemy strike right as it hit you, you could attack and deal massive damage. You could melt bosses' health bars like they were nothing, and it was just Man. amazing. And then you could even use the doppelganger style. You could send out a shadow clone to attack enemies for you. You could stop time. You had the devil trigger. It just... You can do everything. This game is like pure anime. It's nuts, and I love it. And I'll let you guys in on a little secret, but I'm a huge Metal Gear Solid fan. I know, who would have thought, right? But one of the reasons why the Metal Gear games are so good this generation was because Kojima wasn't afraid to experiment. Metal Gear Solid 2 told a strange meta-narrative that we haven't seen anything like it to this day, but if you want to talk objectively speaking here, Metal Gear Solid 3 is one of the best stealth games ever made. It's a game where Kojima finally struck a nice cutscene to gameplay ratio, where if you skipped every cutscene in the game, the gameplay could stand on its own merits. But you wouldn't want to skip the cutscenes because for the first time ever, the Metal Gear Kojima Solid. finally stuck to it. I was always more of a Splinter Cell guy, but the entire I've game, made a video about the game that already. Presented itself as this James Bond meets Rambo type of experience and committed to the bit. This was a game where the level design were completely open-ended. They were <laughs> linear, but open-ended in how you wanted to complete them. You didn't have to kill a what single enemy, hell? except, you know, the big ass spoiler at the end of the game, but you could you could navigate these environments in many different ways. Oh, you could distract shoot. enemies with dirty magazines. If you could think about it, you could do it. And if you weren't a Metal Dude. Gear fan, you could have played Splinter Cell or yep. Hitman. Hitman, which That's was also was right there. incredibly open-ended. Hitman was okay. Hitman was cool. On the fly set up the perfect assassination attempt and then walk out completely unscathed. I could spend an entire video talking about the crazy shit you could do in Metal Gear Solid 3 and Hitman. Oh, that yeah. is how spoiled for choice you are with stealth games at this point in game. Exactly. Gaming was also pretty diverse at this Dude, time. You didn't just have platformers were dark, even better around shooters. that time you too. You had colorful mascot games. You had games like Ratchet and Clank, yep. Mario Sunshine, yep. you had Jack and Daxter. Every console had something for everybody. At and then you had game. like a... Really not much I could talk uh, about for 3D platformers, but they were alive and thriving well, at this well, time. Well, shit, you had like and freaking... It was something for everybody. Gold, Metroid finally uh, took that by bold the first step on Xbox. into 3D, and it's stuck <laughs> there, which is surprising because back then, everybody thought that Metroid Prime was looking to be a generic first-person shooter, but what we got was one of the greatest 3D interpretations of the, the Metroid Super series Metroid. this was a game got completely which better also once took the prime environmental uh, storytelling series came types. along that gave it a whole new life if you scanned enemies and environments that could almost tell a story better than any cutscene ever could and the formula was further expanded upon in Metroid Prime 2 Echoes but my main point is they got it right the first time, which is pretty freaking amazing. Mm -hmm. Man, the survival horror genre is on complete life support nowadays. I don't yeah. know if you guys know this, but no. Resident Evil 8 was deliberately designed exactly. to be less frightening than Resident Evil 7, 
because a lot of people were too scared to play re stupid. This is true. Capcom lost a huge chunk of sales to Resident Evil 7 for this specific reason, but back during the sixth generation, developers weren't afraid to push the envelope in terms of war. To this day, Silent Hill 2 and I've 3 I've never played Silent Hill in my life. The pinnacle of psychological I've heard good horror, things about still it, still haven't had anything never got around to playing to it. it. JRPGs also hit their apex at this point in time, and while Final Fantasy was kind of lagging behind, Atlas was knocking it out of the park with hit after hit. You had Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne, Digital Devil Saga Persona. 1 and 2, and of course you had the Persona series. You had Persona 3 and 4, which didn't just have mechanically sound combat. They had a unique way of telling a story where everything took place on a calendar, and you had to manage your time well within that calendar. You had to choose between dungeon crawling or advancing your social links. This was a game that took role-playing very seriously, where you had to foster good bonds between your party I kinda, members. Too. I'm gonna be real with you. I only got into Persona recently, you know, playing Persona 5 and everything. So I'm not gonna act as if I'm like a lifelong Persona fan, but from what I've played so far with Persona 5, I like it. I have yet to go back and play any of the others. To succeed in this game, and. They were some of the greatest but they games look good, ever made. From what I'm look, I know what you're thinking. You could argue that there have been plenty of modern sequels to the video game series that I have just listed that play more mechanically sound Dude. than how they did in the sixth generation. Look at that, Now, man. you could say that Grand Theft Auto V, Devil May Cry V, Persona V. Man, for whatever reason, we just have a lot of amazing fives that have come out in the past decade. But that's besides the point. Mm -hmm. The main reason... Why a, a game like Devil May Cry 5 plays more mechanically sound than how it did in number 3 is because... I mean, all besides the Skyrim and Grand Theft Auto 5, I mean, they're okay, but they're not anything special. It Suno you know, had to do for DMC 5 was just tighten the gameplay mechanics that were already there, already tried and tested in the third generation. As a matter of fact, we don't get a lot of new and creative ideas coming from the AAA market anymore. And that's because AAA budgets are inflated to shit. Well, that's because, one, they focus too much, like I've been saying in this whole video, and like I've been saying the whole time, they focus too much on pretty pictures, and they just want to scam you out of your money. They want to have you pay $70 or more for what's basically just an interactive movie. That, that's literally all, all modern gaming is today, dude. Seriously. It's a damn joke. Nowadays, it is expensive as hell to make a triple A game because they don't just make hand sculpted 3D models anymore. Nowadays, they will scan a real human being, yeah. a model or an object into the game. Developers like Capcom will pay out of their ass to have a fashion designer design clothing for their fictional characters to wear which is and just stupid because you know you <laughs> i know this is a long shot but uh yeah uh, you could just focus on making the game good because of these bloated budgets developers can't take any risks anymore and what are the new and creative genres that have come out in the past decade in the 2010s well the souls genre now, why is the Souls genre a new and creative genre? Because it is an example of what happens when you have a healthy double-A market. There are three I've major never been markets. I've a Souls in guy. The first market is... I played the, the first one. I wasn't really all that impressed with These are with your it. indie games, and indie games are usually created by only a handful of people. Sometimes, if you're a complete madman, they're only created by a single person, like Pixel, like Daisuke Amiya. But other than that, these games, again, the are made on a game? shoestring or negligible budget. No matter in fact, half the time, indie developers have to crowdfund in order to get their projects completed. But the upside of that is they can be completely creative oh, and experimental wait. in their game design. The only downside no, to no, this no, approach no. is that I they don't that have the budget to go nuts with like, whatever they want to create. The AAA market is the exact opposite of the single A market. These are your big budget game studios created by monolithically sized developers that are. house not even thousands games. of overworked and underappreciated employees. But the good thing about having budgets this big is that they have enough money to hire celebrity voice actors, to create photorealistic graphics, and to hire licensed music. But the downside to this is that 
That Which, big budget. You, none of that shit you need. None of that shit you need. Not the licensed music, not the celebrity, like cameos, voice actors, any of that shit. Not the full realistic graphics. You just need to make your games good. Make your games fun, nigga. Damn. When is this something that's going to finally sink into not just the developers' heads, but all you stupid idiots that are out there actually paying $70 for all this crap that's out here? Like, like, like that's coming out nowadays. It comes at a big cost in creativity. Nobody wants to take a risk because taking a risk means all that money. All those employees that you have working for you, all of it will go down the drain if the game you come out with is crappy. So they tend to play it conservatively and not create anything new and original. But then there's this sweet spot right between single A and triple A. Bang! The double A gaming market is one of the most important gaming markets Hold of up. all time. And the reason My why just really hit himself with a frying pan. What the hell was that? Game is one of the most important gaming markets of all time. And the reason why AA game design is so important gaming AA and AAA. Bang! The AA gaming market is one of the most important gaming markets okay. of all time. And the reason why AA game design is so important is because developers were in this unique situation where they were given too much of a budget to be considered indie, but not too much to be considered AAA, which meant they had all the benefits of indie game design, where they could be creative and experimental oh. with their game design and maybe actually succeed in doing so and pretty much every amazing video game series that we take for granted nowadays started all in the double a market i'm a big devil may cry fan and that game's history is magical basically hideki kamiya was tasked with designing resident evil 4 but somewhere down the line the game became way too action focused and started to turn into devil may cry and the developers at Capcom just said, fuck it, go make your own action game with this. That kind of thing just doesn't happen nowadays. Look at Persona 3 and 4. Again, those are double A games. Or Silent Hill 2 and 3. You know what? Uh, going a bit off topic. You know one thing I also love about videos like this too? They like show me games that I've not really either played before or not really given the proper chance to. Uh, like going back and playing some of the like like uh, earlier personas i'm gonna do that at some point i'm thinking about possibly giving the souls games another crack at you know another crack at it but i don't know who knows double a games every video game series that we enjoy today started out as a double a game look at i mean the i didn't like the first one but you know maybe the second and like maybe the sec maybe maybe the sequels i'll like Ratchet and Clank. Ratchet and Clank started out as a double A gaming series. Without a double A market, video gaming is kind of stuck in a rut where we just redo the really same is. thing over and over and make sequels to the things that already work. Don't get me wrong, Very Ratchet rarely, and Clank Rift Apart is a experiment dope game, make new things. Yeah. I mean, I'm it, a big it, fan of like Dark Souls, but the reason why Dark what? Souls and the Soul series are amazing as they are is because they started out in the double A market. And without a yeah. double A market, how can gaming really advance and move on from here? The sixth generation of consoles was also the final time in gaming where you could expect a video game to be a complete and finished product. Nowadays, right? when you buy a video game, and video games, I should mention, are fucking expensive. They can mm -hmm. cost anything from 60 to $100. And you don't even have the luxury to know that all your hard-earned money is going to good use. Look at games Which is madness, like Fallout 76 or Cyberpunk yeah, 77. Look at that. These games look at that. Yeah. are... Nah. nah, look at that. Look at that, though. Look at that. Look at that shit, though. And you don't even have the luxury to know that all your hard-earned money is going to good use. Look at games look at like that shit. Fallout. That's $70 right there, folks. $70. 70 $60, $70. Cyberpunk what you're 77. For These games are unfinished buggy mess not fit for human consumption like you cannot play these games it is criminal no. that these games were even released the way they were in the state they were the only analogy i could give you is that imagine that if you bought a movie and in all the cg action scenes it cut from imagine a real person 
to a shitty model T posing in the middle of the scene. This is the <laughs> kind of thing that you could only expect in the gaming industry. And the good thing what about the, the sixth generation dude? is that while the PlayStation 2 and the Nintendo GameCube were limited, it was too Somebody ought to be advantage. slapped. You know, like for real though. You you putting out games for full price. You got characters T posing. Oh nah, man. Y'all game developers. Y'all dead ass need to be slapped, bro. And there's people stupid out there to actually, man. Well, the fact that the PS2 didn't have a hard drive or an internet connectivity right out of the gate meant that if you developed a game for the PlayStation 2, it better have been finished and completed right on the yeah. disc that you sold it to them. And if you didn't finish that game, your reputation as a developer would be irredeemably Something damaged. we should be devil doing with developers now. We should be shaming the hell out of them for all these trash ass ports that they do. I mean, all these trash ass like games that they put out now, these trash ports. But no, we don't want to do that. We just want to buy into it so we can flex on social media or, or uh, so we can flex it on our YouTube channels or, or live streams. Devil May Cry 2. While I love this gaming series, Devil May Cry 2 almost killed it. Hideaki Itsuno had to bust his ass off to make sure that Devil May Cry 3 I was Devil May the Cry 2 was that it was. Otherwise, the game would have been completely... But nevertheless, I think I've complained a little bit long enough about the sad state of gaming nowadays. Uh, but with all that being said, let me know what you think of this video let me know what you thought of this reaction do you agree with some of the things i've said or do you agree with all the things i said or do you disagree let me know in the comments down below and if you want to see more reaction videos like this in other content that i do on the channel then feel free to like comment share subscribe and click that notification bell right next to the subscribe button uh, for all notifications so that you never miss an upload from yours truly and until then this has been your boy TW Booty Hunter, giving you guys another banger. And I will see you guys next time. Thank you for being an ass and not watching the whole video. You didn't listen to a single damn thing I said. Thank you for being an ass. Only hearing what you wanted to And getting butt hurt Like the sensitive little bitch you are Thank you for being an ass